Welcome to Speak for Yourself, Marcellus Wiley and Monk, Monk, Emmanuel. I chose. You Any words? We no got words. We got you know what I'm saying? A casual, serious Friday. We casual by look, but we serious by intellect. I like that. Get to. I ain't get the memo, though. Let's get to a huge <laughs> AFC playoff matchup. Hey, hey, hey. Josh Allen's Bills will travel to Kansas City to face Patrick Mahomes' Chiefs. On Sunday, Holmes is seeking his fourth straight trip to the AFC Championship game, and Allen is looking for a return to the same game that saw his Bills lose to KC last season. So, Acho Mania, who has more to gain Sunday, Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen? Josh Allen, big dog, he has much more to gain. So, I was thinking about this. The last 48 hours I have spent deliberating this thought based on something you said two days ago. Okay. You told me that Josh Allen has the most potential in the National Football League, especially at the quarterback position. I agree. Mm-hmm. But then it dawned on me, maybe the most worthless word in the human language is potential. Oh, Potential is the most worthless word in the human language, and Josh Allen has a ton of potential. Why is potential so worthless? Because potential is meaningless if it is never realized. Mm, When we talk about people with potential, we (laughs) talk about people with potential because they never actually accomplished. Really? Man, Greg Oden had a ton of potential. Man, if RG3 wouldn't have got hurt, Mm. boy, he had crazy potential. Mm. Man, Derrick Rose won that early MVP. I wish he wouldn't have got hurt. He had so much potential. Mm. Jamarcus Russell, 6'7", 280, Mm. arm. Potential. Josh Allen, he got the most potential Mm. in football. We keep talking about Josh Allen's potential because he hasn't yet realized what he's capable of realizing, which is maximizing his ability. So while Josh Allen does have the most potential in all of football, it is worthless. Mm. And he can gain that maximal ability when these two line up because potential don't mean nothing. So if you come to me and you show me Josh Allen and show me all his potential, I'll raise you with somebody that has actually accomplished something on the football field of meaning and of substance, not just regular season wins and second place votes. Like I told you, Mm. I don't like to be nominated. I like, I like to, to win. Win it. Josh Allen got nominated for MVP last year. Mm. He didn't win. Mm. It's done. It's time to stop being nominated. Mm. Bump all this potential talk. Josh Allen has to go win something. If he can win hmm. on Sunday versus Patrick Mahomes, that is the first step to transferring that potential energy hmm. into, as you know, but I'm not going to get to Columbia intellectual <laughs> into kinetic energy. That's the first step to not looking at this ball in motion, but not looking at this ball stagnant, but pushing the ball into motion. Hey, hey. Can we push Josh Allen's career into motion as it pertains to winning? Not as it pertains to statistics, not as it pertains to five touchdown passes in wild card games, as it pertains to winning big ones, big dog. Man, casual Friday. Casual Friday. You just come out. (laughs) Boy, you come out here swinging at angles I ain't never felt. Like, coach, I I was prepared for the hooks to come that way. (laughs) What the hell? Okay, okay. Oh, Acho, you know you got the wrong answer. I love how you built up the wrong answer because what you said was actually correct, but you had the wrong answer. The guy who has the most to gain is the guy who has the most to lose. You don't believe me? And I hate when people challenge things like this that are tried and true throughout the ages. You don't believe me that in a position where you have more to gain, you also have more to lose? Let's go to this old adage of Wileyism, but I stole it. The only thing worse than not having is having it and losing it. Talk about it, big Okay, bro. let's go in the parking lot right now, okay? We got two quarterbacks right here. So let's talk about Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is greater than Josh Allen yes, because sir. he's done more. He's accomplished more. He's a greater quarterback. A different conversation is, is he a better quarterback? I still say, yes, he's a better quarterback, but by the slimmest of margins. But when we start to introduce potential, and I love how you changed it, because I didn't say potential. I said Josh Allen has the most talent, not potential. But look, they're both worthless if you don't live up to them, right? Yes, sir. Let's talk about what potential is before we go back to that parking lot. The capacity to grow. Mm -hmm. The ability to have the room, the acreage, the land to grow, to put something on there and watch it actually cultivate. Josh Allen has more to grow than Patrick Mahomes. 
Now we're in the parking lot. You ready with me? Talk to me. Okay. Remember, it's worse to lose it than to have not had it at all. There's a Rolls Royce right there, right? And it's your Rolls Royce. You're like, I feel good. Look at Patrick Mahomes, that Rolls Royce over there. Okay. Now we're going to go the next day. We go to that same parking lot that Rolls Royce is gone. Where my Rolls Royce at, right? All of a sudden, you're calling the police. You're calling your insurance. Everything. You're panicking because you had something and just lost it. Mm-hmm. Damn, Patrick Mahomes, you had the status as the greatest young quarterback in NFL history. And how long that lasts? Josh Allen already came and snatched it from you? You just had something. A Rolls Royce. Take, you ever had a Rolls Royce? No. Okay. So you walk into a parking lot and you're like, where's my Rolls Royce? Versus Josh Allen has never walked into the parking lot ever asking himself, where's my Rolls Royce? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. who has more to gain? The one that potentially may lose that Rolls Royce. If Josh Allen beats Patrick Mahomes, the tow truck is coming. <laughs> oh, you're not the greatest young quarterback we ever seen because it's too short-lived. So in that respect, in that perspective, Patrick Mahomes has more to gain. You're exactly right. What's interesting is okay. everything you said is right as, a, as, as it pertains to your body of work. And I believe what I said is right as it pertains to my body of work. We are still straddling different sides of the line, however. Yeah. So guy. oftentimes in sports, we have those rivalries amongst two greats that are up and coming. But eventually one disassociates himself <laughs> from the other. Early on in my basketball playing career, just high school, because eventually I moved on to track and football, I loved two players. Kobe Bryant, the late, great Kobe Bryant, and I love T-Mac. Uh-oh. Tracy McGrady. I had T-Macs before I had Kobe. Damn. T-Mac was a dude. Yeah. 6'8", 220, could get buckets. Yeah. T-Mac, Yao Ming, Stevie Franchise, Francis, they was a squad, Houston Rockets. But eventually, while T-Mac and Kobe were both here kind of early on, Kobe just started to separate. He just started to separate, and clearly it, during the latter half of Kobe's career and the latter half, unfortunately, of Kobe's life, too short-lived, there was no comparison. No, no, you're right. There was a comparison early on for about five years, but after Kobe won his first few titles, we were just like, dang, there's no comparison there. Justin Gatlin, Usain Bolt. Mm. Justin Gatlin won a gold medal 2004, but then Usain Bolt hit the scene. 08, he won. 12, he won. 16, he won. Meanwhile, Gatlin obviously got suspended. We're talking about the greatest track and field sprinters in American history and in world history. And there was no comparison after a while because though they started here for a while through 2008, one got a gold medal, another got a gold Mm. medal. Usain Bolt just started to separate, started to disassociate. It's the same thing we're looking at right now with Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. Right now through five years, yeah, Josh Allen got a uh, – Patrick Mahomes got an early lead, obviously. Nobody's debating mm-hmm. that. NFL MVP, Super Bowl MVP, 50-touchdown uh, season, 5,000 yards passing. And Josh Allen is on his heels. He is clutching yes, at his heels. Yes, there we go. But if Patrick Mahomes puts Josh Allen away again, we will see that disassociation like we saw with Kobe and T-Mac after Kobe eventually won a couple titles, like we saw with Bolton Gatlin after Bolt won not just the 100 meters in the Olympics, mm. but he started winning the 100 and the 200s, like we saw with Peyton Manning and Phillip Rivers, albeit Phillip Rivers had a little bit of early success, AFC wildcard game, but uh, excuse me, AFC championship game, but the greats will disassociate, and Josh Allen will be disassociated with if Patrick Mahomes puts him in the dirt this weekend. Oh, God. I don't understand why we both have the same building arguments. And then at the end, when it's just fill in the blank, you go the other way. Okay, let me give it to you this way. Mahomes has a standard of greatness to maintain that Josh Allen doesn't. Like, in ter- yes, higher yes, standard of greatness. Yes, sir. I've accomplished more. Higher standard of greatness. Patrick Mahomes already lives in that mansion. Already moved in, family there, settled everything. You know, hey, honey, how's it going? All the gun, on the gun. And then one month, January, all of a sudden, Patrick Mahomes falls short of paying the mortgage of that mansion he has, the greatness he must maintain. And now all of a sudden, he's starting to get those uh, unpaid bill notices, mm-hmm. past due notices, bill collector call it. Hey, man, you getting up out the crib because you're not paying on this. He has to continue to pay a huge price because he is a greater quarterback. He has greater accomplishments. The mortgages do, right? Every single game, especially in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. 
Whereas Josh Allen is trying to still be on the market to purchase that same mansion. He's out there clawing. He's out there getting some bites. Oh, I'm going to go to open house. But he ain't got the mansion yet. He doesn't have the Super Bowl championship. He doesn't have the MVP, et cetera. He's not a part of a building dynasty, et cetera. So guess what? That's how I look at it. Patrick Mahomes, if you get evicted from the place you are, the youngest, greatest quarterback we've ever seen in 50-some years of football, that fast, that short-lived, oh, man, you got more to gain, but more importantly, you got more to lose. Let me give it to you this way, since you don't believe that. Uh, if Patrick Mahomes wins, what are we saying? Should have won. He's a better quarterback. Patrick Mahomes, you got a dynasty building. You're supposed to win, right? If Josh Allen wins, we're like, whoa, look at here. I thought I was premature in saying that this guy was as good as Patrick Mahomes. Maybe I'm right. Okay, you can see the difference. Now, if Patrick Mahomes goes out there and loses, once again, we look at Josh Allen giving him some credit, but we start to get the debit card out. We start to take away from Patrick Mahomes and look at his record differently. Whereas Josh Allen, if he loses, there he goes on that mattress to back to Buffalo. You know you guys have won three. You've won. You played in six playoff games, right, under Sean McDermott. Three home victories, three road losses. He loses again on the road. Okay, that's who Josh Allen is. All I'm saying is why you can't fill out the proper name. You're building the right argument, but you're not saying the right guy. It's because I've seen too much, mm. and it's because I know too much. Okay. Um, players who have to play their entire career at second as second fiddle, eventually I believe that internally they start to erode. And that goes from the internal to the external. Mm. Um, Aaron Rodgers, as great as Aaron Rodgers is, He's never been the greatest during the course of his playing career because yeah. Tom Brady has always been present. Yeah. And so Aaron Rodgers, maybe it's because of the fact that he's never been the greatest while playing and he knows he is the most talented, yeah. but we don't know because he hasn't won the most. I believe that's done something to him. Yeah. Kevin Durant, he knows that he is the most talented basketball player in the world. Yeah. At least he believes so. Mm. But we don't know. Why? Because he's never been the best. Because LeBron James has been present mm -hmm. during the majority of Kevin Durant's okay, career. Yeah. Now, Kevin Durant chimed in for a year or two, won a finals, won another finals, a couple MVPs, but we still looked right over KD and his 6'11 greatness right to LeBron James and said, Gregory, yeah, KD, you're good, but LeBron's maybe the greatest all time. Yeah. Kevin Durant, Aaron Rodgers, both know or believe they are the most talented at what they do, but they're not the greatest because they ain't won. Mm. Josh Allen could quickly and easily fall in line with those other greats who know, by talent, I'm better than Mahomes. Yeah. By talent, I'm better than Herbert. By talent, I'm way better than Burrow, yeah. but I ain't won nothing. Yeah. So just like Aaron Rodgers has lived the entirety of his career better than any other quarterback in the National Football League, mm. the whole world don't think so because he ain't won nothing. KD, the world don't think so because he hasn't won as much as LeBron James. Bill Parcells said this. Let's go. You are what your record, record. Says you are. Let's go this. So you are what your wins, Josh Allen, say you are. And you are who your accomplishments, Josh Allen, say you are. Thus far, you ain't accomplished nothing as it pertains to Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. So you are exactly who your accomplishments say you are, which is all right, but you ain't Patrick Mahomes. You got to go gain that respect. Mm. Threw that gain in there at the end in that last sentence to try to button it up, huh? He ain't got no buttons on, but that was amazing. <laughs> amazing once again. No one ever throughout the draft process ever said that Aaron Rodgers had the greatest potential at the quarterback position. No one ever through the draft process ever said that Kevin Durant had the greatest potential as a basketball player. They woke us up to our sleeping selves and said, hey, y'all slept on our potential. Y'all slept on our talent. Remember, KD couldn't even bench press his weight. 185. <laughs> Remember, Aaron Rodgers dropped down to 24th in the draft because people had questions on and off the field about him. But they did say that about one player, I remember, in basketball. And they did say that about one player, I remember, in football. And let's see how it worked out for him. I don't know. I remember John Elway. John Elway was my favorite player growing up, him and Eric Dickerson. I thought I had an arm. I thought it was going to be Elway. But I knew I could run, so I thought it was going to be Dickerson. Turned out I was wrong on both accounts. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember. And now if you look back, you can look at draft grades. I think John Elway still, along with some offensive linemen, you know, like Ogden or mm -hmm. like Orlando Pace, have the highest gra draft grades ever. Because John Elway 
had the greatest potential. Now, it looks a little different now. You look back because he was a mobile 2.0 quarterback in the 80s. But John Elway materialized that greatness. Give him respect. There's another one, though, even greater than John Elway coming out. Maybe he had a perfect grade. Didn't even have to go through the combine process because he was just already that great. You know who that is, right? LeBron James. Mm -hmm. The greatest potential, the greatest talent ever to be drafted in the NBA. Has he maximized that? Absolutely. So when you bring me case after case, T-Mac the great. Mm -hmm. Other guys, those are more of the exceptions that prove the rule that if you are that great and all of a sudden you start to accomplish, oh, man, you are on your way, Josh Allen. But there is somebody who was already there, and that's Patrick Mahomes, big dog. Patrick Mahomes has to float this boat only by wins in the playoffs mm -hmm. and by Super Bowl championships. The only currency that the world will accept from Patrick Mahomes now is that you went out there and won it all. Now. Yeah. He's really in Super Bowl or bust categories just because he's performed to that level. Where Josh Allen is saying, yeah, it'd be nice to have that, but it'd be worse if you're Patrick Mahomes to lose that. That's the only difference we have. I don't think I'm right because I think I said the same thing as you, but it's been interesting to have the convo. Coming up, Joe Burrow won his first playoff game last week. Now it's on to Tennessee. Tennessee. Tell you what a win will mean for the Bengals quarterback. But first, is Aaron Rodgers under the most pressure this weekend? We'll answer that with our guy, Mark Sanchez, guys, in the building. That's next on Speak for Yourself. Tomorrow, the NFC Divisional Playoff presented by Intuit TurboTax Live is on Fox. As Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers head to Lambeau to take on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. It'll all start at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Welcome back. We got our guy, Mark Sanchez here, NFL mm. expert. Bang. I'm glad you dressed up. I did. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we got to head to Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers' MVP level season continues tomorrow on Fox against the 49ers. But our own Bucky Brooks wrote, he still tops the list of people who need to win the Super Bowl the most. That is Aaron Rodgers. Now, Bucky said after Rodgers' year-long soap opera in Green Bay, he, quote, needs to cap off the 2021 season with a Super Bowl win to change the narrative surrounding his legacy. If you need a Super Bowl win, that's a whole lot of pressure. Mm. So, Marcellus Wiley, is Aaron Rodgers under the most pressure this weekend? Remember, you got Stafford, you got Brady, yeah. you got Mahomes, you got Allen, you got Burrow, yeah. you got Tannehill. Yeah. But is Rodgers under the most pressure? Man, look at that lineup of all those guys under pressure. As they all stand there, Aaron Rodgers stands on their shoulders and say, yes, I'll wear the crown of having the most pressure this weekend. You want to know why? Because the dominoes have already started to fall in terms of what's the narrative of Aaron Rodgers in the postseason. And you wish it was more positive than it is. But right now, what we say about Aaron Rodgers, every time we talk about his greatness, only one ring, right? Then us up here as analysts, broadcasters, we dive a little deeper and we start to see, oh, Aaron Rodgers, in NFC Championship games, you're one and four. But this is not even an NFC Championship game. So this will be even more catastrophic if the next domino that falls is that you went one and done in the playoffs after the success you guys had this regular season. Wait a minute. Not just this regular season. Didn't I say dominoes? After last season, when you guys were 13-3 and three, and you lost at home, and everyone said only thing they need to do is play an NFC Championship game at home and they'll win. Oh, wait a minute. Is there also a loss that when you guys were 15 and one, you went one and done at home? All of a sudden, people who are not as smart as us because they don't have to be as smart as us about football will sound as smart as us because they will now put all of this together. And Aaron Rodgers will be Aaron Rodgers the Great with only one ring who also now chokes in the playoffs. He can't go out there and be one and done. He's under the most pressure this weekend. Yeah, I agree with you on that, Marcellus. Can't wait to hear what you have to say, Sanchez. But Aaron Rodgers under the most pressure to me because he has the highest expectations. Mm. Most talented quarterback in football, at least he's going to win the MVP, most people assume. Beyond that, Aaron Rodgers, you got a bye week, so you've been resting up. Matt LaFleur said two days ago he anticipated the 49ers would win. Shade of the Cowboys. He anticipated the 49ers <laughs> would win, <laughs> and they got a head jump on preparation. The 49ers, y'all, have played eight games in 49 days. They've played three must-win games on the road consecutively. Mm. So the 49ers are limping into this game mm. in Green Bay. Meanwhile, 
The Packers are sitting here chilling, haven't had to win in a long while because they've already know they were going to be the one seed for about three to four weeks now. So Aaron Rodgers, you're the MVP, best quarterback in ball. Oh. All your players are now healthy. The 49ers players are injured. You're hosting a game. The 49ers are playing on the road for the third consecutive week after playing eight games in 49 days. Everything is set up for you to win. All the pressure is on you because you have garnered all the privilege. Now, you worked to some degree, for this privilege. But all the pressure's on Aaron Rodgers because you've garnered all the privilege. Privilege of rest, privilege of knowing your opponent. It's on Aaron Rodgers. That's fair. I I think we'll go clean sweep. Three. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) He's got a lot of pressure on him, but you said he worked for some of that? That's why I caught two. Hey. He worked for all of it? What? Come on, dude. Somewhere between all and some. He's been grinding, though, and he's been balling. There's no doubt about that. But here's... The things that really, really stand out is last year, one seed, bye week, home mm-hmm. field, MVP. I, I, uh, mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Then this year, same exact thing. Mm-hmm. Then the other big one, if he is, and this, you know, Bucky Brooks alluded to this, soap opera and all this stuff going on in Green Bay, if he does leave, then what's mm-hmm. his legacy there? I mean, he's right there with Brett Favre for playoff wins, right? Mm-hmm. Favre is at 13, he's at 11, he wins two, and the Super Bowl, he surpasses him and has another Super Bowl mm-hmm. One more Super Bowl win than Brett Favre. Yep. So he's tied with Bart Starr. Goes out as the best of all time, potentially, Great. in Green Bay. Mm. So that's one reason for all that pressure. But I still think about just the team that they're playing and how, you know, you look at this game with Bosa, Warner. Those guys are coming in with a little banged up. Mm-hmm. That only makes the narrative like, Correct. oh, well, then you should just beat them by 30 now. And then with Jimmy G and his thumb, and it's going to be three degrees, and it's going to be freezing, and can he grab the ball? Can he, can he do what they did in week three and put Aaron mm-hmm. Rodgers you know, up against the ropes and make him come back with 37 seconds? Mm. I don't know if this is the same 49ers team as back then. So, yes, is the pressure on him? Yes. Maybe more than Tannehill, even though they're the one seed and they have home field advantage? Yes. Does that come with being the Green Bay Packers quarterback? Yeah. Yes, and one of the best of all time? Of yes. course. So it's yeses across the board. Yeah. But part of me just feels like he loves it. He loves it. He, he loves, loves people, loves what, it. betting against him, yeah, rooting like, against him? Yeah, it's just like he loves a, mm. He loves that, like, karate kid. Like, all right. Yeah. You're right. I, yeah, you're but right. But you know. This is really hard. Okay, this is really hard. Watch this. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's always layer two, level two. No one wakes up out the bed and says, oh, I want to be an underdog today. I want everyone to root against me today. No, you want to be the king. You want to be the one that everyone bets on. But then you learn to process. You learn to internalize, make a negative into a positive. Mm -hmm. But you don't wake up wanting this. Aaron Rodgers does not want to wake up after this game losing to Jimmy G Mm. and the 49ers. Again. Mm -hmm. Again. Let's go here. And then look up and see his playoff record. And it will be 11 and 10. Aaron Rodgers, like when you see 11 and 10 and then you say, which quarterback – is this playoff record for you're like not Aaron Rodgers because he's greater than just being barely above 500 we are crushing the Dallas Cowboys right now because what they lost at home they lost in the first game of the playoffs they lost with all of that talent Mm -hmm. and all of that potential and they weren't even the number one seed and we killing them what you think we should do to the Green Bay Packers in this situation and worst part about all this I don't know if you're going to chime in on this one, but anyone who's been in a relationship before, (sighs) when you get into an argument, you know the first thing that happens? Say sorry. (laughs) (laughs) To avoid all the rest of the issues, you better say sorry. Just get up out of it. Abort, right? Abort. But we get competitive in arguments, and more importantly, we get the receipts. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the argument just warps (laughs) from what you're talking about right now to, you remember four years ago, your mama? just want to be right. (laughs) You just want to be right. Aaron Rodgers loses this game. He's 11 and 10. You know what we're going to say? You know what people going to say? You remember this all season when, and you know he mm-hmm. anti vax and, and next thing you know, he can't uh, abort that conversation. Aaron Rodgers, you better go out there and win, bro. More receipts. Mark Sanchez, what year were you drafted? Oh, nine. Oh, nine. Um, Aaron Rodgers, when he was drafted in 05, do you all remember what he said? Remember, the 49ers have the number uh, one overall pick. Uh. And the 49ers drafted Alex Smith, number one overall. Aaron Rodgers, leaving Cal, thought he would be number one overall. He falls to number 24. He gets interviewed. And the question, how disappointed are you, Aaron Rodgers, that you will not be a 49er? Aaron Rodgers retorts, not as disappointed as the 49ers will be that they didn't draft me. Boom. Well, thus far, Hmm. the 49ers done whopped you in the playoffs, waxed you in the playoffs, not once, Hmm. not twice, Hmm. but three times. Hmm. If the 49ers come out and beat Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs again, 
Mm. They looking back like, Man, we weren't all that disappointed. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, you got a ring on us. We went a couple times. Maybe we'll go this year if we beat you. So you also have to remember that in the play. Like, Aaron Rodgers has been talking that talk since 05. Hey, Not hey. as disappointed as the 49ers are going to be. They oh. didn't draft me. Nine points Please do. See, Acho didn't spend time on all of his stuff today. No, he he just went with that because he was diving deep. <laughs> <laughs> they slim and trimming. Watch this. <laughs> well, because nice. because nice. to Sell's point of they gonna bring out the receipts. They're gonna bring them. Hackers are going to bring out the receipts, bruh. Anti-vax, all that nonsense. Mm. I'm offended, all that nonsense. Mm. I want Randall Cobb, all that nonsense. Mm. All of that that you did just for us to come out here and lose once again. Mm. The Niners fans on the flip are looking like laughing at you looking stupid. Oh, you was talking all that talk even back in 05. We got you in 19, went to the Super Bowl. We done got you again. So Aaron Rodgers understands because Sanchez is right. I do think to a degree he likes that chip on his shoulder. Oh, he loves it. But yeah. you can only have that chip on your shoulder if you can overcome it. You can't have that chip on your shoulder and just let it weigh you down. Yeah, I think mm. enough times pass with those losses and stuff. If he goes and makes it to the mm-hmm. Super Bowl, that will be a little bit of vindication, especially if he walks out on top, drops the mic, and says, yeah. thank you, Green Bay, and writes one of those nice letters that you post on Instagram, <laughs> the digital signature. Yep, yep. That's the ultimate, like, all right, I'm but good. The, but the problem is, let's be real, if he loses, they say all of those things we just said collectively – and you're trying to leave us? And you're even putting us in jeopardy of losing you? What was it all for to just get one ring? Like, no one's cashing in on Aaron Rodgers. They just feel a little undermined that he's thinking about cashing in on them, especially when they're at another low point. Because this is the low point. Next year, Jordan Love. Next year, no Aaron Rodgers. Next year, where's our faith? Because we don't believe in Jordan Love fully, and we don't believe in this team even if we have a good record. We don't even believe in this team if we have a home playoff game. We don't believe in this team if we have a number one seat. And we don't have Aaron Rodgers, so he could sink more than just this shit, man. He could just him. kill the franchise. Man, confidence. Heard high and dry. What is interesting, if I'm, a, if I'm a Packers fan, if Aaron Rodgers goes out there and the Packers go one and done, to some degree, I'm almost ready to transition. Oh, okay. because there all of probably the dr- people like that, I could all I could of the that. drama that Aaron Rodgers has brought is only worth it if you win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all was talking about it. No, it was on on, on Mike. Um, even relationally, it's like, dang, man, I'm going through this again. Oh, but they look good. Like, oh, oh, oh dang, is she dragging me through this one again? That ain't yeah, how we said it, though. That's how, how they said yeah, it. No, we did. See, we basically they, said, come on camera, no, they no, to I was, you know me. But then oh off camera, y'all trying to reach the story. We looked at oh you, and God. Sanchez was looking at you like, that's it? And then we were like, yeah, it's like the beautiful girl. No Thank matter you. what they wear, no matter what they say, it's all good. That's how you came up here today. Great. Yeah, so and I'm taking that story yeah. from we off camera, you a compliment, and I'm synthesizing it, because no matter what Aaron Rodgers does, no matter what Aaron Rodgers brings as far as drama, it's all good, because we win. But if y'all, if the Packers lose again, now I'm, I'm, I'm done with the drama because we're not winning. So what's all the drama for? But he's still Eventually, fine. It don't. It don't <laughs> yeah, no. He's still fine. He's still fine. Yes, he's still but fine. The, but the, the argument, relationship got to end. The argument is starting to and, outweigh. Yeah, that's no, real. but then that's he goes real. and does the Peyton Manning and moves to another team and goes and tries to win one there. Damn. What about legacy though? If you so start, what? Peyton, then he'll get a second Super Bowl potentially somewhere else. Yeah, but see, the departure matters because mm-hmm. Peyton Manning, four neck surgeries. Oh, that's how y'all going to do me? Y'all going to move on? You got to move on? He lost plenty of playoff games to Tom Brady. He lost plenty of playoff games. Yeah, but in, he didn't leave them high and dry. I agree. He lost the Super Bowl. They let him go, Andrew Luck. They let on. him go, Andrew Luck. Yeah. If, if, Jordan Love ain't Andrew Luck. If Aaron <laughs> Rodgers does not at least get them to a Super Bowl, on, I would feel well, some type of way as a Packers fan. You yeah. was here for 14 years. As great as you are, and not even as great as I think you are, as great as you think you are. Because as good as we think Aaron Rodgers is, he thinks he's better. Which is awesome. <laughs> I, I love say, it. That's awesome. Which is I'm great. Some of that. <laughs> but, you all, but you also better back it up. No, but You ooh, better back it up now. Ooh, but I feel ooh. like we vilified him a little bit this year. And facts, some of that's facts, you know, his own doing. Some of that's a little media facts, you facts. know, over the top. So Peyton Manning didn't have that as he left, right? No. It was like, oh, man, bummer. Like, yeah. shucks, you were really good for us. Hey, good luck in Denver. Yeah. For Aaron, it might be a little different, especially if they go one and done after all the drama this well, season. It's like, you mm-hmm. know what? Kick rocks. Mm-hmm. Sell says this. It could have been better. Mm-hmm. Sell says this, and I love what he when he says this. You can't call for attention and hang up. Mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers has called 
for more attention <laughs> than anybody this season. I, I think he'll be on the line. He, he, well, he, be, he, it's on the line, so he better be on the exactly line. Exactly right. Damn, damn. Exactly right. Ooh, this is spicy chicken nuggets up mm. here. Always heard you're supposed to have them still wanting more. Ooh. If he loses, yeah. are they wanting more of Aaron Rodgers? I know they don't want Jordan Love. They ain't trouble. <laughs> Coming up, Joe Burrow is leading his Bengals into Tennessee tomorrow. Tell you what a win will mean for the Bengals quarterback. Next on Speak for Tennessee, Tennessee. Y'all don't know about that? Tennessee, Y'all don't know about that three. Joe Burrow got his first career playoff win last week and said, that's how it's going to be in Cincinnati moving forward. All right? Next up is the role game against the Titans, who appear to be getting their superstar Derrick Henry back in the lineup after he missed over two months. Mark is back, but I'll show you what a win Saturday mean for Joe Burrow. Uh, it would catastrophic catapult him into a completely different category, more so in narrative form, I believe, than anything else. Mm. If Joe Burrow to win, were to win on, on Sunday, all of a sudden, the Bengals, who didn't win a playoff game in 31 years, have now won not one, but two playoff games? Mm. Mm. Joe Burrow, second season in the NFL. Joe Burrow, he's catapulted into a category with the great young quarterbacks, and now he is near the top of that list. Now, somebody who knows better than anybody is sitting here, Mark Sanchez. Sanchez, you go to an AFC championship game early on in your career, not one, but two, catapults him into a different category. I'm thinking about the likes of Dante Culpepper, Tom Brady, Ben Roethlisberger, Flacco, Sanchez, Cap, Russell Wilson, Pat Mahomes. All those people live on great at minimal in narrative form. Dante Culpepper. Cover of Madden 2002. Peace. Like, what about Cole? Get your roll out. Exactly. Get your roll out. Right. Peace. Exactly. Hall of Fame. So you got yeah. Cole Pepper. I love You Cole got Pepper. Flacco, $100 million quarterback, highest paid quarterback in the National Football League when he hit his deal. You got Russell Wilson. You know how big his name is. You got Ben Roethlisberger, about to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Colin Kaepernick. Obviously, everybody knows him for what he's done off the field at this point. But don't forget when Colin Kaepernick was kissing the bye. Hilton. Yeah, mm. back in the, uh, when he was Hilton. in the league. Mm-hmm. You got Mark Sanchez on the cover of Magazine. So when I think about it, oh, my bad. You look at Acho shirt. Look at you. And he got his tucked in. That was 10 years ago. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this throw. Oh, you going with the Ronaldo tank. Look at you. Oh, man. This dude was a star. That and still is that dude. You live on in narrative form when you do incredible things like go to an AFC championship game that young look no further than the man to my left mark sanchez mm. to testify to that truth mm. if yeah. joe burrow wins yeah. on saturday if joe burrow wins this weekend he jumps it doesn't matter what he does the rest of his career mm. he will jump in narrative form to a level and a legend that is rarely seen and rarely touched i i can i can get down with that <laughs> i bet that's fair that's fair all i'm saying is he's on this fast track right this um you know unheard of ascension in in this narrative you're talking about mm. so anything else from here is kind of gravy because he got him to this position right they're in this position because of him mm-hmm. remember he hasn't even played a full season like true or just over a full season mm. right he played half of a rookie year got hurt came back yep. and balled out bang and you know a stinker against the bears i remember that one week four but for the most part has been absolutely lights out now they're playing here because of him at this rate you're talking about narrative if he continues to ascend at, you know, with this kind of trajectory, with this kind of speed, I mean, we're talking like statue in front of Paul Brown Stadium. Yeah. We're talking about his own line of Skyline Chili, like that's going to rival Skyline <laughs> Chili. It could be Joey B's Beef Chili or something. Like Joey Ball game is going places, yeah. mm, especially yeah. with a big win. However, that's a big win <laughs> this weekend to go to Tennessee, Tennessee, <laughs> with, totally with Henry back. With those two receivers playing well, with Tannehill knowing how to take care of the ball, that's that's a tall order now. They're going to have to play some serious defense. He's going to need some help on special teams. It's not all going to be Joe Burrow. If he's got to go throw it 50 times, that, that's a hell of an order for, mm, for, like for a young QB. Like yeah. Like God, I like what you guys are saying, but I hate to be <laughs> oh, here we go. the guy who lives take up to Take down the statue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the chili. Yeah, yeah. Let me be who I am. Um, one of my nicknames. Wow, style. One of my nicknames, Teddy Bear. One of my nicknames, that dude. Another one? Debbie Downer. Donald Downer. <laughs> they call me Donald Downer. Because in the middle of, of a nice dinner party, yeah. I will stop the music and say, what just happened here? As they say, I'm based. I will go there, damn it. All right. Here's the problem. 
What would a win for him on Saturday mean? You know what it would mean? As you even answered, not as much as advertised. It will be more sizzle props than actual substantive love. This is what's going to happen, and it happened to you, Sanchez. Mm -hmm. The floor will be too high too early, and all of a sudden, they're going to imprison him based on those expectations. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to happen, just like it's happening in San Francisco. They get bored with just something that's good or great. They look at Jimmy G like, man, get out the way. Jimmy G took him to a Super Bowl. Jimmy G now has them in a pick em game, some will say, against mm. the Green Bay Packers. And people are like, we don't care. They even are bored with that success. In Cincinnati, you give it to them too fast, too early, they're going to get bored with greatness. They're going to get bored okay. with his success. Like this that. is what this is. And it's happened to all of us. It's a setup. Oh, man. You're saying he's better off losing this game long term. I'm just, I always tell Acho, there's two ways to get 15 sacks. 0, 5, 10, and 10, 5, 0. Which player you believe in more? They both got 15 sacks. Oh, it's a way, it's a like way a to... a pound of feathers, a pound of bricks kind of thing? Like, um, I don't both know. 15 sacks. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I will tell you this. Let's bring it home. Please. Okay, this is your auntie at your eighth grade graduation. Talk to me. Okay? And we all went to Scissor after. Didn't we all? My Nigerian auntie? Oh, uh, 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 I don't know about her. She might have cooked. We got different options. We got a Hispanic auntie. We got a tip. We got a Nigerian auntie. <laughs> okay, here we go. My auntie. Thank you. Okay, my auntie. At my eighth grade graduation. Oh, baby, congratulations, congratulations. And then walks away. Mm. You know why? Because in the scheme of things, and great perspective, do you even care about your eighth grade graduation? Like, you're kind of like, you're supposed to do that, right? If Joe Burrow's going to be great, he's supposed to win a divisional game. Not this early, though, because all it's going to do is set him up for the failures that he may go through going forward because the odds of him going up and down are greater than him continue to elevate. Ah, there are so many layers here. I'm going to lead you somewhere. That's the only reason I wanted to chime in first. You said he'll be a prisoner of his expectations. You all know we've all seen these things on social media. If you had to be stranded on this island for a year for $10 million, would you do so? No cell phone, no electricity. Mm. Essentially, you're in prison. It just so happens you're in prison in Bora Bora. I think I would take that. <laughs> because while you're a prisoner of your expectations, if the expectations are where you want to be and the expectations you have for yourself, put me in that prison. Facts. Just Great like point. those social Great media uh, ploys. Put me on that island by myself. Great. I wanted to be there anyway. Joe Burrow, two days ago, Sanchez, I'm sure you saw it. He came out and said, yeah, this is what I expect for the Cincinnati Bengals. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not that excited because this is where we're going to be from here on out. This is who Joe Burrow is. Now, mm -hmm. you hit the nail on the head, though, because <laughs> Sanchez, y'all were in the league at the same time and we were in the league at the same time. You caught nah, the No, no, nah, Sanchez, 09, I was done in 07. Okay, you're done by then. I know my legacy, my greatness, my impact. Did not last till 09 either, but <laughs> no, nah, we didn't overlap. But, I would have brought his ass So down. Sanchez and I overlapped. Sanchez was in New York, and he goes from New York to the Eagles. I am at the Eagles. Mm. So I knew of Sanchez's career before I knew of Mark Sanchez. Mm -hmm. The legacy of the career, I was like, oh, snap. Yeah. Like, this dude done beat Belichick? Mm. This dude done went to AFC wildcard games? Mm. This dude was on a GQ? This yes. dude was like... The legacy, because of the early accomplishments, games. were so great. I don't know if it did set you up for failure later on in your career, Ooh. but I know that the highs were so high that it put the league on notice and it put defenders on notice that when what? you walked into one Nova Care way and we became teammates, I was like, oh, that's Mark Sanchez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, then yeah, I just yeah. found out, oh, it's Mark Sanchez. <laughs> uh, womp, womp, just taking womp, bubble baths on, on oh. camera. <laughs> what did he say? What did he say? When they see me in real life, I look better in real life or whatever. <laughs> You guys always do the rap songs. I figured I could jump in. Yeah, yeah. I probably butchered Now, it. jump out. But <laughs> speak to that. Speak no, that's to that because, no. like, did it set you up ooh, for failure? Well, ooh, ooh. well it just sets, it sets a really high bar. And then a lot of that is team success. A lot of that mm -hmm. is continuing to mature and um, your, your growth as a quarterback, uh, understanding what, winning, what wins and loses games. I think Joe Burrow is light years ahead of where I was. I mean, that's not a dig at myself. I've, just, I've seen the guy work out. I've seen his work ethic. I can... I can tell just by talking to him, he's a little off, like in a good way. Mm -hmm. his, his pie chart of life is like one tiny little sliver that's not football, and that's like family and video games and like mm -hmm. that's probably pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Everything else is like rehab, football, film. You know, he's like living in this football matrix world. So, yes, this is what he expects. And he comes off 
if you don't know him very well, it's a little off-putting because he'll be like, yeah, this is okay. You didn't think this was coming? Mm -hmm. And he doesn't mean it in a rude way. It's just his the, the way he is. It's yeah. just his mentality. It's his expectation. Uh, and it's through the roof. Now, uh, you know, they go out and win six games next year. Yeah, there's a lot of people, especially on this panel, that'll talk a lot of smack on them for for those kind of comments, but that's just the way it is. Oh, man. You're looking at so intently. Dude. Man, I had to oh, go no. just make sure that there I knew go. what I knew. Oh, my God. <laughs> Philip Rivers. Okay. Uh. Borderline Hall of Famer, correct? Mm -hmm. Philip Rivers. When you look at him, a couple things stick out. Damn, he was good, but there were others that were better. Yes, sir. Like, let's be real. Joe Burrow's going to stick out, but then there's going to be Justin Herbert. There's going to be Josh Allen. Sure. There's going to be Patrick Mahomes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then Phillip Rivers goes to an AFC Championship game, right? Right. Loses. Mm -hmm. AFC Championship game is higher than what this is right now, but loses. Maybe he gets there this year, Joe Burrow. But then all of a sudden, they start looking around when he was a Charger, like, okay, when are we going to burst through this glass ceiling? When are we going to burst through this threshold? And that becomes the conversation that is more blinding than actually what is he doing every single year, putting you in position to win. Is Cincinnati just all of a sudden going to run a dynasty? Is Cincinnati all of a sudden just every year AFC championship or bust? I, I will go on record and say no. Because if Patrick Mahomes hasn't done it just yet in terms of AFC championship, Super Bowl win or bust, in Patrick Mahomes' greatness, he has one ring. You think Joe Burrow's just going to go out there now, set the floor that high, there's not going to be any room between the floor and the ceiling, and say, I'm going to live comfortably in there. Even if all you like to do is play video games, you need more space than that. You don't need that success that early. But all I'm saying things. is check that division, dude. Check oh, he's going to be in position. It's true. I mean, they are tanking at the right. Look at the yeah, way, true. and this takes nothing away from Tom Brady, but they ran that division yep. for like yeah. 17 years yeah. straight, and nobody could even touch them. Yeah. I don't see that division really challenging him. Great point. Ben Roethlisberger's gone. Who's going to be their next successor? Yep. Lamar Jackson, what's going to happen there with this contract yep. situation? Baker Mayfield, who's the future of Cleveland? But Joe Burrow's sitting pretty. <laughs> they look like... He's sitting pretty combined. in the division, but not the but conference. Here, that's but, fine, but honestly, honestly you Brady, get there. All Brady's you a great point. Get there. If you're built to beat your division, yeah. then that should be enough to propel you to a couple more wins during the year. Yeah. All you got to do is get in the tournament yeah, and see what right. happens. Mess around, get a home game. Let's go. Now we're one win away from a championship game. I mean, it yeah. happens fast. It does. It happens really fast. I'm about, to, I'm about to kick up some dust, but I ain't going to hide my hands. Can we go to the big board? Can we take a, oh. can we take a field trip? Oh, can we take a field trip to the big board? Here we go. Oh, you coming too? Oh, me too? I get to go. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody come to the board. Everybody come. We're taking a field so. trip. I didn't know. Ten <laughs> to the big board. If you don't move them old knees and old Boy, you already know I had to get the right hip. I had to get a permission slip. The right hip. If Joe Burrow wins yes. and Josh Allen loses to the Chiefs, that's the, the assumption I'm making. Okay. Josh Allen loses, Joe Burrow wins. I think, Ooh. Sanchez, to, to a little bit of what you said, but I'm going to take it even further. Joe Burrow, to me, is now the second no. best quarterback oh. under 25. Oh. Let me break it down. I'm not, I'm not talking about talent. I'm not talking what, about talent. What are you saying? I'm talking about overall how it translates. We know that Josh Allen is more talented. We know that Justin Herbert is more talented. Lamar Jackson might even be more talented than mm -hmm. Joe Burrow. But Sanchez, you know this, Sal, you know this. Let's go. And I just want to talk. I don't even want to do all that yeah, charade. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some quarterbacks just have it. Oh, he And has. it translates. Aaron Rodgers is more talented than Tom Brady. But Aaron Rodgers doesn't have that same it that Tom Brady has mm. that somehow makes everybody better. Mm. If Joe Burrow goes to an AFC championship game, that means that he's done what Justin Herbert couldn't do in two years. That means he's done what Lamar Jackson couldn't do in about four years. That means he's done what it took Josh Allen three years to do, but he did it in two, and he went to a franchise that was worse. Uh, uh, if Joe Burrow uh, goes to an AFC championship game, assuming again Josh Allen loses, uh, y'all, give me his talent plus his it over Herbert's talent, over Lamar's talent, over Allen's talent, I'm not saying that Burrow's more talented. I ain't that crazy. Uh, but y'all, he makes it work. He went to LSU when you covered college football. Uh, you go to LSU, LSU ain't won a title since Les Miles, and you instantly have the greatest LSU football team in the history of the program. Then you go to Cincinnati. Mm. Cincinnati hasn't won a playoff game in 31 years, and you instantly win two games, go to the ASC championship game, we're making the assumption Joe Burrow wins. 
How can you sell? You're saying he's in the Super Bowl now? No, no, no. Making the assumption <laughs> to go to the AFC Championship game. Okay. Okay. How can you make an argument that you want Justin Herbert, not based off talent, but I don't get how y'all can make the argument that give me Justin Herbert, who hasn't gone to the playoffs yet, mm. and he's done less with more. Mm. Give me Lamar Jackson, who hasn't gone to a championship game yet, and he's done less with more. Give me Josh Allen, who it took longer to do less with more. Uh, I just don't know how y'all can mm, take these other guys. I don't know. No, I mean, no. It sounds good, but that's, I think we're just, we're, we're like leaps and bounds, just leapfrogging other guys, and I don't know if that's fair. I need a little more time on task. I need a little more, a couple more wins, like consistency over the years. And a lot of this has to do with team success as well. Mm -hmm. Like other guys, clock management towards the end of the game. Like there's some things that could have changed for the Chargers to be in this playoff discussion. And we're singing a different tune about Justin Herbert. So I don't know. Some of this is based on some other players and other components there. Yeah, man, I got to get in on this too. Keep sucking in. I know it's going to be tough, but you know, hold it in. (laughs) At least I would be. I I didn't even grab it. over this button about to go (laughs) back. Here we go. Uh, I know that you are selling, and I'm, I'm here, on, and, I, and I'm buying. I'm buying. But when I buy things, especially for my kids, I like the packages that say no assembly required. You know, mm-hmm. your argument just it, too many parts, too many pieces right oh, there. Because wow. look at this guy right here. He's post-traumatic stress. The reason why he's like, I don't know. Was he the number two quarterback because he had the early success of AFC championship game appearances? Consecutive, like back-to-back. Him. But you don't all of a sudden, because of that team success, just say, well, you're just going to leap past everyone else that we think that is actually better than Although, you. But they've he, won a lot of these games that, because of him. Because of him. Like, so, and Joe Mixon. Very yeah, he did. But y'all keep talking team success, team success. Okay. Because Bengals team did not have success oh, before rolled. Joe Burrow showed they up. Rolled Joe Burrow, that's fair. That's they my point. Burrow. Like, okay. we keep that. talking, oh, the Bengals have a whole bunch of team success. Joe Burrow is giving them team success. Okay. The Bengals were worse before Joe Burrow arrived than Lamar Jackson's Ravens before Lamar arrived. The Bengals were worse before Burrow arrived yeah. than Justin Herbert's Chargers before Herbert arrived. Yeah. The Bengals were worse before Burrow arrived than Josh Allen's Bills before Josh Allen arrived. And okay. we all know the Bengals were worse before Burrow arrived than the Chiefs were before yeah. Mahomes arrived. Burrow's Bengals were nothing okay. before Burrow. That's why he was the number one overall pick. Yeah. He wasn't. He wasn't. He oh, wasn't, yeah. and even he wasn't. So, so he went to a well, he went to the best situation. Judge yeah, a man by the that's distance travel. That's my point. Judge and a man by the distance travel. Yeah. Why you don't have Joe Burrow? Because he went to the worst. He, ain't one he went to the worst yeah. situation. Now Burrow's not a one because he, like yeah. you said, he ain't one. Listen, yeah. to jump all those guys, he's got to beat Tannehill this weekend. Yes, sir. Yes. He's got to go to either Buffalo or KC. So he has to beat them. Play a that dragon. One. Okay, that's okay. play a you dragon. Wanna, and be here in L.A., Radio Row, like, getting ready for the Super Bowl. But let me ask I mean, both, if he wins that one, wipe him off the map, he'll be number one. Mm. Let me ask both of y'all. Why does Burrow have to win an AFC championship game to jump Allen, even though Allen has Because Allen's an better. It's really simple. We right now don't think Joe Burrow. Burrow is better than Josh Allen. I think universally. Talent-wise, so, agree. Just an even accomplishment performance just yet. He's yeah, not I mean, there yet. five playoff yeah, he's Eight not years. there yet. Yeah. He has Justin Herbert just because of team success. Mm-hmm. But then even that, people will say, let's talk about quarterback to quarterback. Some would pick They're Justin close. Herbert. Some They're would close. pick Joe Burrow. It's close. He needs not only to have the team success, but he also has to sprinkle in a little more of a dose of Joe Burrow is off the charts. I don't see that just yet. I see him putting this team on his back. I see him having the it factor. I'm seeing him have tremendous intangibles. But in terms of all performances, Josh Allen and Justin Herbert still got Let me, let me ask you more. Go ahead. And you too, Lamar. Just a little more. I just think it's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. Tough. It is. <laughs> uh, but I, I think, wouldn't y'all say, and I'm doing this right now, wouldn't you say that what Joe Burrow has accomplished is the third most impressive thing on the list of accomplishments? Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> NFL MVP, Super Bowl MVP. <laughs> I'm putting this unanimous MVP uh, above Joe Burrow. Okay. But taking the Bengals from nothingness, no playoff wins in 31 years to now winning a playoff game. And again, I'm assuming he beats the Titans for this list. That's greater than your 31 passing touchdowns as a rookie. That's greater yeah, than yeah, yeah. your second place to Aaron Rodgers and MVP. <laughs> Bro, and you know this, to take a team from nothingness, and mind you, your defense with the Jets was yeah, dominant. Silly. To take a, de- a team from nothingness to an AFC championship game, I don't know. I, I, now, I'm betting on his potential. 
No. Nah. But if you get that to word. an AFC Championship game, it's realized. Oh, yeah, it's real. That thing has become kinetic. Thanks for joining us, Mark Sanchez. Yes, Let us be your punch back. And let's punch it back. All right. Jerry Jones said, coming up, he has a lot to think about regarding his coaches. Uh huh. Mm. We have a lot to get to. Ooh. Dallas is sound. Want to the big board or not? What are we gonna do? Let's next. <laughs> Speak for yourself. That was a forty-minute segment. The Cowboys are still reeling after the first-round exit to the Niners. Jerry Jones spoke today and said he does not want to hear what the Cowboys are gonna do this offseason to get better. He wants things addressed during the season. Adding, "quote I got a lot to think about." Ooh. I got a lot to think about, I said, regarding coaches. coaches. Yes, Jerry Jones. Yes. yes. I can't wait for this one. Marcellus Wiley, yes. what do you make of Jerry Jones' comments? Woo, what I make of Jerry Jones' comments. This is going to be something right here. Jerry Jones, man, I know that he is a master marketing executive. I know that he is a tremendous owner. He took care of me. Jerry Jones, what a brain. What a genius. And what comments are he ma- is he making right now that are intended for others? Who are they intended for? I think the lazy person will sit there and say, Mike McCarthy, duck. Oh, no, 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 no. Jerry Jones has the double barrel shotgun. Mm. And let me tell you which each barrel is aimed at. Not Mike McCarthy. You want to know why? He keeps saying coaches. And most people say, well, that's Mike McCarthy and somebody else. Oh, no, no, no. Once again, Jerry Jones is aiming this at two things. One our coaches, but it's the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator that have the nerve on my watch to come out here and stand on the shoulders of the Dallas Cowboys organization and then go elsewhere without doing a damn thing here. Y'all mean to tell me y'all going to come up in here and get y'all names floated around as head coaching opportunities all across the league and then win a single playoff game? Didn't even call a good game offensively and defensively. Could you stop anybody early on? Oh, but y'all going to use the star to help you shine elsewhere. That's one of the barrels. You know why I know he's saying it like that? Because he keeps using the plural, the you plural. He keeps saying coaches. He ain't talking about Mike McCarthy because he would say our coach. He's talking about coaches, the ones that are trying to depart him without doing anything as Cowboys coordinators. The other barrel is pointed at their value. Oh, y'all want to go out there and try to get another job? Well, let me just let everyone know. I really have questions about those coordinators. Not enough of a question to fire them, but enough of the question to just lower their value, bring them back, back down to earth, make sure that they work a little better and harder for me. I'm looking at Jerry Jones, and he's looking at Mike McCarthy. He's like, look, I need my credit. I set this team up for success. And now you have people employed under you because we know You're the conductor. You're not the one calling the plays offensively or defensively. But those who are trying to leave here and try to get some of this clout from us as Cowboys, oh, I need to put them in place. I need to blast them. I disagree with that, but I will get to that later. Um, Jerry Jones, hear me when I say this. Uh Do not undermine all your good work as a GM by being a bad owner. Because Jerry Jones, as a general manager, you have been one of the greatest in football as of late. First team in NFL history to have a 4,000-yard passer, a 1,000-yard rusher, a 1,000-yard receiver, a 10-interception cornerback, and a 10-plus sack defensive end, outside backer, inside backer hybrid in Micah Parsons. Jerry Jones, as a general manager, you and Will McClay have been phenomenal. Do not undermine all that good work by being a terrible owner and retaining Mike McCarthy. I love Jerry Jones' comments. The greatest decision Jerry Jones has made in the last 365 days, the greatest decision was not drafting, Michael Parsons. Hmm. The greatest decision was not paying Dak Prescott. The greatest decision Jerry Jones has made in the last 365 days was a coaching decision, was hiring Dan Quinn and getting rid of Mike Nolan. That's the greatest decision Jerry Jones has made for this Cowboys organization. So, Jerry Jones, make another great coaching decision and rid yourself of Mike McCarthy. For the very first time in the Ooh. last 25 years of me watching the Cowboys as a fan, covering them as an employee, and now covering them as a national analyst, Jerry Jones spoke more as a manager, spoke more caring about the team's wins than caring about the team's money. For the first time, typically Jerry Jones would just go out there and simply say, man, you know, I'm, I'm glad with the way we fought. Because the Cowboys, they increased their value this year. Mm. But finally, Jerry's like, man, bump value. I want to win. And I love the comments he made, Sal, because Jerry Jones is looking around like, did we really just lose at home? Yeah. To the Niners? Yeah. And Jimmy G got a broken thumb? Yeah. 
and we got all this talent that I've acquired? Dak, I paid you, man. Zeke, you went to Cabo, I paid you. Demarcus Lawrence, I paid you. Mm. Amari Cooper, I paid you. Michael Parsons, I cut Jalen Smith, one of my greatest hero stories since the turn of the century. I cut Jalen Smith, you and Leighton Vanderish, so it could be y'all show. I cut the same Jalen Smith who rehabbed for countless hours because he had drop foot, and I sat there and watched him rehab for 365 days without playing, and I cut that man. So you, Leighton Vanderish, and you, Micah Parsons, could run the show. So I cut a dude who gave everything to the team. Mm. I paid y'all who was out there in Cabo. You, Dak Prescott, <laughs> paid you. And, and y'all can't beat the Niners? Mm. I think Jerry Jones is finally just like, look, I've done all I can do. Yeah, It's yeah, time for be. y'all to start doing what I done paid y'all to do. The you, plural. The y'all are the coordinators. Let me be real. Jerry Jones, the general manager, you A-plus maybe? Mm -hmm. Except in these same comments, he also said that Zeke is still capable. Zeke ain't capable. Zeke wasn't capable. Zeke didn't show up. Zeke repeatedly doesn't show up when you need him. Go back to the Rams game when you guys lost in the playoffs a couple years ago. Like, that's not who Zeke is for whatever reason. This was supposed to be the lean, mean version. So you're saying don't undermine what you are as a general manager by not making the right decision as an owner? He has a decision to make at the running back position. Let's just be real. Also, as an owner, don't make the wrong decision. Ah, Cho, you really think this will be a smart move to get rid of a Super Bowl winning head coach to promote a losing coordinator because of what reason? That doesn't make sense as well. Jerry Jones is being real explicit, even though he's being vague. How do you do both? I keep saying coaches. Now, Mike McCarthy, before the day was over after the loss to the San Francisco 49ers, what did Stephen Jones say? He's safe. But now all of a sudden we're hearing a lot of coaches, coaches. What are we also hearing concurrently? All of these coordinators are going elsewhere for interviews and opportunities. He like, dog, yeah, unfinished business right here. And y'all going to try and use the star to help you shine elsewhere? I swear it, without saying names, he is basically saying, y'all coordinators can get y'all stuff right because I got the players, except Zeke, that I need. So the wisest decision that Jerry Jones can make in the last 20 years would be to fire Mike McCarthy. Oh, man, why? Here's exactly why. You can win a Super Bowl without a Super Bowl roster. Eagles 2017. Based on all their injuries, they did not have a Super Bowl roster at that junction in time. And you can not make it to a Super Bowl or lose a Super Bowl with the Super Bowl roster. For sure. The Dallas Cowboys 2014, 2016, 2022. 2014, the Dallas Cowboys had a Super Bowl roster. DeMarco Murray, NFL rushing leader. Tony Romo, one of the greatest Cowboys quarterbacks in their history. Des Bryant, a young prime Des Bryant. All-pro Des Bryant. Cole, uh, Cole Beasley, I believe, was on the team at that time. A younger Sean Lee. A young Tyron Smith, Zach Martin, mm. and Travis Frederick. Super Bowl roster. No Super Bowl appearance. 2016, Cowboys had a Super Bowl roster. Dak Prescott, an MVP vote getter at quarterback. Ezekiel Elliott, a first-round top-five pick at running back. You still had Des Bryant, though he was aging to a degree. You had Tyron Smith, much more of a savvy veteran. You still had Travis Frederick. You still have Zach Martin, Hall of Fame guard, Travis Frederick, all-pro center. You got Jason Witten, a savvy tight end Jason Witten. Super Bowl roster. No Super Bowl. 2022, Jerry's looking. You for sure got a Super Bowl roster. Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, mm -hmm. Zeke Still, Dak Prescott. Now you got Micah Parsons. Now you got Trayvon Diggs. Jerry's looking at these Super Bowl rosters that he has compiled. 2014 specifically, the Cowboys team I played against. 2016 specifically, 2022. Super Bowl rosters, 2021, 2022. Mm. And Jerry's like, and we ain't got no Super Bowls to show for it. The wisest decision Jerry can make is to fire Mike McCarthy because Jerry knows Super Bowl rosters only come around so often. You got one around right now. If you have a Super Bowl roster and you want to win a Super Bowl, you need to have a present Super Bowl head coach. Not a past former Super Bowl head coach. A Super Bowl head coach who can get you one right now. That's why Jerry, to me, is talking to McCarthy. Man, I, I really, really want you to see this. <sighs> Jerry Jones is looking like, y'all really, really trying to get y'all's without me getting mine when I help build up something, like you said, that is Super Bowl ready, Super Bowl worthy. 
as they say, Jerry wants to look at his coaching staff and say, address the issues during the season, not the off season. Because in the off season, all fingers are pointing at me, general manager, Jerry Jones owner, like build a team, construct the right roster. He's like, I've done that. But what's happening is simply as this. What I always say, nobody cares about what you're doing until you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I don't care if y'all are interviewing elsewhere. I don't care if y'all candidates elsewhere. But just handle business right here. Acho, if someone work for you, Acho. And they're like, well, I'm looking at other opportunities out there. You're like, fine, as long as my business doesn't mm -hmm. suffer. Done. Yes, sir. And then he watches his business suffer. And then he's like, and y'all still out there trying to get y'all's? When I ain't get mine, I think Jerry Jones is sitting there like, Mike McCarthy, you safe. The reason why Stephen Jones said he's safe is just because I don't think it's all on you. You can't have it both ways, Acho. You can't say, Mike McCarthy, what do you do? And then all of a sudden when you want to fix something, you say, fire Mike McCarthy. What does he do? Mike McCarthy is keeping this thing together. And Jerry respects that. He's just looking at those coordinators that are getting a little too cute in terms of their interviewing process and saying, oh, job not done. But my one final thought. He can't be talking to the coordinators. At least he shouldn't be talking to the coordinators, Dan Quinn. And I would also include Kellen Moore because okay. Dan Quinn didn't have anything to fix. Like, Dan Quinn played as well as possible with that defense with the pieces he had. Mm. Michael Parsons is, is the best pass rushing player based upon pass rushing grade in football. Based upon run stopping grade, he's the 32nd linebacker in mm. football. I was telling you before that game, Cowboys not going to be able to stop the run, big dog. Mm -hmm. Demarcus Lawrence, great pass rusher. Randy Gregory, great pass rusher. They're different when it comes to stopping the run. So they couldn't have aggressed those issues in season unless, Jerry, you want to give me new pieces. But for every strength, there's a weakness. Yeah. Cowboys have a whole bunch of strengths. Trayvon Diggs, you knew who he was. He's the best ball hawk in football that we've seen truly in the last 25, 30 years. But he also gave up 1,000 yards receiving. We hadn't seen that from any quarterback. So Dan Quinn did his job with the pieces you gave me, Jerry Jones. Kellen Moore, he did his job with the pieces you gave me, Jerry Jones. Mike, uh, Mike McCarthy, that's the one person to me, sell mm. who ain't do his job with all of the pieces that he had been given. I hear you, Rick Dog. Quote Jerry Jones, I got a lot to think about regarding these coaches. No Mike McCarthy big. Is he two people? Is he three people? He's <laughs> plural for a reason. Speaking of the team that knocked out the Cowboys, Terry Bradshaw still has plenty of cash left, so Fox Bet Super 6, bring it back. Start the cash to give away even more of his money. Scan the QR code and enter the division of contest featuring 49ers Packers for a free chance at the growing jackpot. One of the questions is, which team will win and by how many points? I'll show what you think. Well, of course the 49ers are going to beat the Dallas Cowboys. But as it comes to these Packers, they don't have a chance. Packers by 12, 49ers, you did all you could do. Great job, thus far. Woo! I had Packers by nine. Then I switched it out of respect. Packers by four. Hopefully. Out of respect. Packers. I <laughs> know, right? Last time, the stack the cash jackpot grew to be over $300,000. And Fox Bet Super 6 wants to make it even larger this time. Scan the QR code, download the Super 6 app, enter your picks in the divisional contest for your chance to win. Then invite your friends, because the more people who enter, the bigger the jackpot gets. Coming up, we have to head to the big board again. Eight quarterbacks are left. See where they land in our rankings. That's next on Speak for Yourself. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself. Zoom, it's Finally got me. <laughs> Look at you. Boy, you dressed to play, too. Look at you. <laughs> Divisional weekend, and we have plenty of star power at quarterback and receiver. With so many legacies on the line, we wanted to give you our confidence rankings. And the eight quarterbacks remaining. Acho, give us your list first. Starting it off, man, let's keep this simple. At eight, we have Jimmy Garoppolo. We know Jimmy Garoppolo. He did great against the Cowboys, but he also tried to give that game away. At my seven spot, talk to me. We got Ryan Tannehill. Now, uh -huh. Ryan Tannehill has done a great job keeping the Titans afloat without Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry's back, but when the Titans need him most, I'm not sure how well he'll show up. So, playoffs, he, I want him seventh best. Well, it gets tricky, Sal. It gets tricky already? Now we got a whole bunch of names. Oh, I'm fine. I'm big dog. I feel now you. we got, we got uh, Brady. We got Rodgers. We got Mahomes. They're not at six. <laughs> you okay, ain't got right. none of that. At six, I got Matthew Stafford. Oh, look at you. Matthew Stafford. You sold out to Rams. That was fast. That was easy. Come on. Oh, I had to. I like Stafford, but I don't love Stafford oh, just like, yet. Huh? You're I don't like. love him just yet. You're like. In my five spot, what you got? Josh Allen. Eh? Uh, eh? Now, Josh oh. Allen balled. Uh, he balled last week. 
five touchdown passes against the Patriots we defense. We but we've seen him spaz before, too. We've seen him lose his head a little bit, too. So that's why I got him at my five spot. Mm. At my four spot, I got Joey B, baby. Yeah. I got over Joe jo- Burrow. Baby. Over Josh Allen already. No, this is going into the game. Yes. This is not like that he this won is going game. into the oh. game. Ah, something about ah, Joe Burrow's ah. confidence level, Sam. Something about, I don't know if we've ever seen an athlete master arrogance and confidence as well as Joe Burrow. He something. literally is walking the line mm-hmm. of arrogance and confidence better than we've ever seen in sports. That's why I have him as yeah. my four. My three spot. Okay. Patrick Mahomes. Be real. Up. Be real. Patrick Mahomes. He's the best young quarterback, but the operative word is still young. He's great. But he's young. That's why I have him at three, because y'all know the two vets are above him. In my two spot, Tom Brady. Greatest quarterback of all time. But we do know to some degree, physically, he's shown himself to be limited. Remember last year in the playoffs, physically, 55% completion percentage for the three games. The reason the Bucs won the Super Bowl last year, their defense. So Tom Brady has shown himself in the playoffs to start to slow a little bit statistically. My number one spot. Y'all can only one dude left. Aaron Rodgers, Aaron that Rodgers? bad man, 12 gauge. Um, Aaron Rodgers, he has his chip on his shoulder. I think he also knows this is his last year in Green Bay. He has to make sure he goes out with a vengeance. So as you look at it top to bottom, Rodgers is my one. I got Brady as my two. Mahomes is my three only because he's a young cat. Mm. Joe Burrow is the tricky mm. one, mm. but I just love Joe Burrow's confidence mm. level. Josh Allen, more talented, and mm. he's hotter right now than mm. Matthew Stafford. Mm. Matthew Stafford and the rest speaks for itself. Mm. Talk to me, big dog. In an attempt to kick your list where it belongs outside the studio, I will go over there and kick this board, but I need this board and it's expensive. So all I'm going to do is highlight some of the issues I see right here. It's more of like, you too damn close to me. Get off me. You ever been walking down the streets? Man, move, damn. <laughs> Josh Allen's like, man, Sta- Stafford, man, move. You haven't accomplished what I've accomplished in the playoffs. Patrick Mahomes is looking at Joe Burrow like, man, move. What the hell are you doing? And then Josh Allen looking at Joe Burrow like, excuse me. <laughs> How the hell you get in front of me? You all mixed up. Three to five is a problem. You need to switch the order. But let me help you out, big Please dog. Because like we usually do on this show, we walk together in unison, and then Otto gets lost, and I got to go <laughs> find him. Let's start with number eight right here. Put him up there. It ain't based on looks. It's Jimmy Garoppolo <laughs> at number eight. We know that if our team is going to succeed, it's not because of the full efforts of Jimmy Garoppolo. No slight, just the way it's constructed. Let's start with number seven. Ryan Tannehill. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, look. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You kept this thing afloat when Derrick Henry was on the sideline. He He's coming back. Respect to you. Props to you. But Ryan Tannehill, if you're the MVP of this game, I don't know if that's going to be the best thing for them. They need to have that ground game and stop the run. Number six, Matthew Stafford. Hey, but you know what's crazy? I spent 17 regular season weeks. Then I had to hear it in the playoffs already last week. Now... I've said, uh, my confidence with Matthew Stafford, a little cold to lukewarm. Mm -hmm. You said hot, hot. Matthew Stafford, LA Rams, hot, hot. And then all of a sudden, I look in your confidence for real when you got to put it to paper. Stafford and Stafford at the same place. You're going to have to explain yourself. But let's get to the real. Number five, who I got there? Joe Burrow, where he belongs. Where I think he knows he belongs in terms of resume. This is not just like, oh, Joe Burrow, look at this meteor coming. Oh, my God, he's rising so fast. It's about what have you done Mm -hmm. just yet. You beat the Las Vegas Raiders. Yay! You defeated racism, misogyny. You defeated that team. But, boy, you got a lot more to do before you can climb up higher on this list. Number four, let's get real. Patrick Mahomes. Oh, you want to talk about it. Patrick Mahomes has the accomplishments, has the resume. But does he have all of your confidence? He balled last week. I give him that. Oh, look at you. You ready to fight, huh? But at the same time, there are just three made men out there. And one of them is number three. Look, I'm objective. I am not going to be a homer to the point where I'm going to put Josh Allen any higher than he deserves. So he goes just a little higher than Patrick Mahomes. He goes at number three. I see this matchup. In terms of confidence, the edge went to the guy who I think is going to win this game. They faced each other last year in the AFC Championship game. He took his lumps. This year, he's getting on the road once again. I see you, Patrick Mahomes. I'm coming for you. Give me that crown. Number two, we already know what this is. It's the guy who struggles in the playoffs. Aaron Rodgers. Like, I can't get Aaron Rodgers number one status. That's going for Tom Brady to go. Because Tom Brady, in these moments, when you need him most. I got issues. 
It's Tom Brady. I got issues. Let's After go. there, throw Tom Brady up there. Let's look at the complete list. Let's go, go. Um, he has a Super Bowl. A. He got a Super Bowl. A. Uh, he ain't got a Super Bowl, no. but he got a Super Bowl. Yeah. So you got to explain something to me, big dog. Mm-hmm. How do you have Josh Allen, who has only been to an AFC championship game once, Meanwhile, Patrick Mahomes has been not only three times, but three consecutive three times. Consecutive. How do you have Josh Allen ahead of Mahomes? That's a way bigger travesty mm. than me having Joe Burrow ahead of Allen. No. The only thing that Allen has accomplished that Burrow hasn't is something that Burrow can accomplish this weekend. Allen can't even accomplish what Mahomes has accomplished mm-hmm. this weekend. Burrow wins this weekend. Him and Allen have done the exact same thing in the National Football League. Respect. Joe Burrow has just done it more difficult and faster than Josh Allen did. I'll give it to you just like this. Patrick Mahomes has Josh Allen in terms of resume, in terms of accomplishment, in terms of achievement. Of yes, 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 yes. But the problem is he doesn't have them in terms of the potential and the talent that's going to be realized this weekend because they get to face each other. This is not about who's had the better career. This is my confidence going into this matchup when I think that the teams are evenly matched. Think about it. Don't take my word for it. Las Vegas has this home team at one and a half point favorites. What are you supposed to get when you're at home? Three? Three up. Ah. Get three up. So don't blame me, y'all. Blame the casinos. They out there saying Josh Allen is coming. I'm already saying he's arrived. You got Joe Burrow somewhere. He doesn't belong. You don't have to put them pink glasses back on again. <laughs> Holla at them sisters. Speaking of quarterbacks, Matthew yeah, Stafford's like next challenge is beating Tom Brady. Ooh, tell you why I have concern for the Rams quarterback. That's next on Speak for there Yourself. Is. There it and is. he coming right. There it is. Look, man, there you ain't got is. no suit jacket on. You All can't right, stay better than that. He stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Stafford finished last week with his fewest pass attempts and completions this season, but he still managed to get his first career playoff win. Now next up, a huge matchup mm. against Tom Brady and the defending champ Bucks on the road in Tampa this Sunday. So mm. while Matthew Stafford quieted a lot of the hate this past weekend, he got to try to do it again. Yeah. But so what's your confidence level in Matthew Stafford? Oh, I got to answer this two ways. Um, let me just say, literally, I have moderate confidence with considerable concern. Okay. That's what I'm going to say. But I'm going to give you something that hopefully expresses the feeling I have towards Matthew Stafford in this game. The same feeling you have when you're doing something that's not new, but it's different. Let's talk about it. Okay. You ever been in the club? And I know you're in this generation where y'all swipe left and you just get the Instagram handle and y'all, that's how it goes. But I used to go to the club and we had to go walk across the club to go get that number. And you used to call it perp walk. You know, you got to do the perp walk. Like, everybody's seeing you. Oh, damn, what you doing? And you know how that anxiety is there? And you're like, yo, I mean, look, this ain't the first time I got somebody's number, but there are some unknowns, you know, like her sister or her cousins, her friends. Girl, let's go. And, you know, are, are like, mm, look at him. What are he doing? Are he coming over here? Oh, no, he ain't. He's doing too much, girl. This is our section. All that stuff, right? Matthew Stafford's going somewhere that is not new for everybody else, but it's different for him. So he has that anxiety in him. Last week, it was because of the flow of the game. I didn't have to throw, but only 17 times. Yeah, that's what Coach told you, flow of the game. He was bringing you along slowly at Matthew as he was getting your confidence right. All right? So now I'm looking at Matthew Stafford as he's doing this. He's going out there. This game is on a pedestal to him. Be, think about it. This is the farthest he's ever been in the playoffs. We're going to see how he responds to this new situation, new circumstance. So what do I'm saying about Matthew Stafford? Yeah, I'm not scared to get your number. I'm not scared to walk over here. But don't act like you ain't gotten a little anxiety in terms of how this thing going to play out. That's how I see this. I'm low-key with you, Sal. How com- uh, what's my confidence level in Matthew Stafford? Enough. <laughs> That's really what it is. It's you? enough. That ain't good for Enough you. to get the job done. Again, yeah. same with your example. Hey, how much money he make? Enough. <laughs> hey, how good he look? Good enough. <laughs> how good she look? Good enough. Enough. It's like, enough. it's enough. I don't know if I need Matthew Stafford to throw for 400 yards. I just know he's going to play good enough to get the job done against these Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I know that what Matthew Stafford will bring to the table will be enough. Mm. I don't need Matthew Stafford to be better than his best. Mm. I just need Matthew Stafford to be enough, and I trust that he will be enough. Now, it's not going to be as easy as it was. It's not going to be enough either. It'll be enough, but it ain't going to be easy because what? Cam Akers isn't just going to be able to run all up and down the field yeah. like they did against the Cardinals. And now the film is out. Odell Beckham, you know in the red zone, he going to get a fade. Mm. So you better believe the defensive backs are going to play for that fade. Cooper Cup, 
red zone. You know he's going to get an option route. Yeah. You better believe Cooper Cup is going to get double teamed in the red zone. Yeah. Somebody going to be waiting on the inside, somebody on the outside, and they playing for the fade. So, Matthew Stafford, what will you bring to the table? But for me, Sal, three to five. Three to five are the numbers. He has to make three to five big throws. Mm. It's going to come down. This game is going to come down to three to five throws that only three to five quarterbacks can make. I like. And Matthew Stafford, you got to make one of those. You got to make all of those yeah. three to five throws mm. that only three to five quarterbacks can make. If Matthew Stafford makes those three to five mm. throws, I think that the Rams will win the game. I believe he can make those throws, and Matthew Stafford will be enough. Rams are not going to win the game because Matthew Stafford is not going to feel comfortable enough to be the quarterback you think he's going to be. But I don't know who you think he is. We have the big board. You got him, Tom Brady, at number two, going against number six. But then sitting here, you're saying he's enough. He's enough. He's enough to beat number two in terms of your confidence, and he sits at number six. <sighs> Let's go back to the dynamic, what you're feeling. You know what you're feeling? Enough. You know why when you're driving somewhere, it feels shorter when you're coming back? It's because you've already been there. But you're full of anxiety. You're full of all these emotions and all these thoughts. And it's the same distance. It's the same drive. But coming back, ah, oh, that's nothing. Going there, when we go get there? That's Matthew Stafford. This is the deepest he's ever been in the playoffs. When we go get there? He's going against the GOAT. When we go get there? And he's going against the Super Bowl champions from last year. Man, Matthew Stafford going to feel like, man, he ain't going to never arrive. Not at number six, Cornacho. Coming up, the city of brotherly love might need to be a little patient with Jalen Hurts. See if he deserves any. That's next on Speak for Yourself. You can get the number, Wiley. Yeah, no way. Eagles general manager Howie Roseman said a few days after their playoff loss that Jalen Hurts will be the starting quarterback next season. Well, Former Eagles star Donovan McNabb, my dog, has a message for Philly saying, quote, you have your quarterback. You just have to continue to stay patient with him and allow him to get comfortable knowing what the situation is. Yeah, I choke. How much patience does Jalen Hurts deserve? His patience is out, so 20 starts. Um, he's out of patience. We're out of patience. All yeah. patience is is it's a willingness or it's an ability to uh, not get upset or get angry with somebody for their actions. That's what patience is. Nah, big dog, after 20 games, Eagles fans have every right to be upset with you for your play. Eagles management and the coaching Ooh. staff has every right to be upset with you for your play. See, the Eagles have only looked at this coin on one side. Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz was terrible. But look at it on the other side. Jalen Hurts was drafted early in the second round, and many said he had several deficiencies. Not only was he drafted early in the second round, we got rid of a quarterback who showed MVP potential and cleared the deck for you, Jalen Hurts. Then we hired a, a coach on our staff who goes back with you to your middle school football days, Jalen mm -hmm. Hurts. Mm -hmm. Jalen Hurts, we drafted a receiver in the first round who won the Heisman. And Jalen Hurts, we drafted a receiver in the first round the year before that. So we have loaded the deck for you, Jalen Hurts, now. Not saying both of those receivers, particularly Jalen Rager, has panned out, but we've made every effort, Jalen Hurts, for you to develop into a franchise quarterback. Mm. We got rid of Carson Wentz. We drafted a Heisman winning receiver. We drafted a first-round pick of wide receiver the year before. We got rid of Zach Ertz so we could feature Dallas Goddard. We have Miles Sanders. We have an offensive-minded head coach who's young and supposed to be a next wave of brilliance as a head coaching position. Mm. So look, Jalen Hurts, what else you want from us now? What else can we give you, big dog? We've done everything that you can ask as a young quarterback. Patience is thin if I am an Eagles fan. It's now or it is never. And that's really how the Eagles need to look at it. So yeah. the NFL is not a NFL of patience. Coaches on the football field don't say, man, you got to have a sense of patience. <laughs> no, they say you got to have a sense of urgency mm -hmm. it is an Precious. urgent nfl <laughs> it is an urgent league everything must be done urgently oh, yeah? jalen hurts okay. has to get better urgently mm. jalen hurts has to win games urgently this ain't about patience mm. it's about urgence mm. this patience is done man i would love to play for that coach <laughs> we need to go out have a sense of patience <laughs> Gentlemen, all in, coach. <laughs> Let's take our time and climb this mountain. Oh, man, uh, how much patience does Jalen Hurst deserve? As much as Donovan McNabb just gave him, as much as I'm going to give him. Next year, we ride or die with Jalen Hurst. 
Last year, you didn't commit to Jalen Hurts. And it's crazy because Jalen Hurts was brought in as an insurance policy. He was drafted as an insurance policy because their franchise quarterback was just a little risky behind the wheel, right? So then now you had to cash in your insurance policy and get rid of that risky driver who is risky now in Indianapolis to the point where they're like, uh, we don't know about him just yet. You got an insurance policy. It's time to make the claim. And it's also not time for you to make another claim, which is go back into the draft and try to get another franchise quarterback when you have one right here. I don't know what type of insurance you have, Acho, but you can't make the same claim within a certain amount of time because they're going to call fraud department on you. What the hell are y'all doing over there? You gave Jalen Hurts no commitment last year. You got a first-year head coach that you even said, I don't know if he should have been a head coach. Well, I think he's answered that. But don't get greedy in this moment. One, it's just fraudulent. But two, as Devin the Dude said, don't give up for show. Four more, you end up with no quarterback. Did you have patience with Josh Allen? Yeah, because it took him to his third season to show you this version of Josh Allen. Let's go back. Derek Carr broke out in his third season. Derek Carr, is he a franchise quarterback? On the fringe, I put Jalen Hurts somewhere around there. Jared Goff, third season. Way back in the days, Joe Montana, third season. Joe Montana? Yeah, Joe Montana, third season. Aaron Rodgers didn't even start to his third season. But now Jalen Hurts, who, let me give you this, combined yardage through their first nine starts. Jalen Hurts is fifth all time. Deshaun Watson, Herbert, Mahomes, Cam. Damn, you talking about urgency. He led the team in passing yards, duh, you're a quarterback, and rushing yards, not a running back. Y'all need to give some respect to Jalen Hurts. At least ride or die with the young man. Stop putting in all these damn claims. What if they don't want to die? Huh? They just want to ride, coach. Yeah, I always had a problem with that song, too. <laughs> Coming up, can the 49ers upset the Packers? Well, will the Rams knock off the defending champs? Hmm, picking all the games this weekend. It's up. It's next on Speak for Yourself. Yeah, ride or live. Like Welcome back to Speak for Yourself. You got eight teams, four playoff games, and it's time for Marcellus and I to put our money where our mouth is. Is it mouth is or mouths are? Anyway, it's going to be Ah, we got to make our picks for this week's divisional round matchup. Let's, Let's get it started in yes. Tennessee. Joe Burrow, fresh off his first career playoff win, and will try to keep the streak alive on the road tomorrow. Meanwhile, Titans getting Derrick Henry back. He's been activated, expected to start after missing over two months of action. So, mm. Sal, talk to me. Pick them. Bengals. Titans. I'm going with the Titans. Uh, I think Derrick Henry already has 100 rushing yards in the minds of the teammates on the Titans. Think about when you get your MVP back, how that inspires you. And you're already talking about a team that went out there and kept everything afloat without their MVP. You think they're not going to be inspired to go out there and now face the Cincinnati Bengals? Oh, yeah, Joe Burrow. A tremendous, magical ride that ends against Tennessee. Mm, I think the Burrow ride is just getting going. Oh, Give me the Cincinnati Bengals. Joe Burrow, just too much offense. Joe Burrow, just too much confidence. I love Derrick Henry. I'm not sure how good he's going to be in his first game back. The only way you can get in football shape is by playing the game of football. And Derrick Henry hasn't played the game of football in over 60 days. Mm. Excited to have him back. But Joe Burrow, I think he's just going to be too much for the Bengals. Moving on, tomorrow night's matchup, Jimmy G is battling injuries, but he's on track to lead his underdog 49ers into Lambeau Field. Also, Bosa has been cleared, just got word of that one. On the other side, Aaron Rodgers, MVP caliber season, but 0-3 versus the Niners in the playoffs, so sell, pick them. Yeah. Niners, Packers. I'm going with the Niners. There's no way that Aaron Rodgers the great who may win back-to-back -back MVPs, will lose home playoff games in back-to-back -back years. And the Packers right now, it's not going to happen right now. So the Green Bay Packers will win this game. What did I say, the 49ers? I hope I did not. Producer's got my ear. <laughs> this is the Green Bay Packers winning this game. Aaron Rodgers is not going to lose again. Uh, I'm going to keep it very, very simple. Green Bay Packers. Packers going to win handedly. Packers going to win convincingly. The 49ers have done a great job all season. Niners fans, Colvin Heller, do not be disappointed. Ah. Your boys did all they could do, but all they Rah. could do will not be enough versus Aaron Rodgers, Rah. these Green Bay Packers, Devontae Adams, Randall Cobb coming back, Bakhtiari, and company. Randall Cobb this back. is the biggest 
differential of points oh of the okay. games tomorrow. Randall Cobb, oh. he's the one? He's the indicator? Can I roll? Okay. Staying in the NFC, <laughs> Matthew Stafford, he finally got his playoff dub, but now he got to go to Tom Brady's Buccaneers. Tom Brady and the Bucks are going to be a beast. So, sell, mm. pick them. Yeah. Rams. Bucks, Super Bowl champions last year, still on that quest this year. They get past the Los Angeles Rams. Hey, I know that they got a squad out there, high-flying offense, Matthew Stafford. I don't think he's going to go out there and struggle, but not do enough against the GOAT. Go Bucks. Mm, give me the Rams on this one now. Remember, at the very start of the season, August 9th, I said Rams, Chiefs in the Super Bowl. I have to double down on that. This will be Matthew Stafford's biggest test, not of the season, his biggest test of his career. Wow. It's Matthew Stafford's biggest game, not of the season, his biggest game of his career. But Matthew Stafford, you're built for this moment. You've been a number one caliber quarterback since you was in Highland Park High School to Georgia to now. Top-tier talent, Matthew Stafford. Top-tier offensive mind, Sean McVay. You got Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, Von Miller on the other side of the ball looking out for you. Matthew Stafford, Rams, they find a way. Get it done. Mm, all them names, but not a team. Go Bucks. Go get it. <laughs> <laughs> Divisional round wraps up. KC on Sunday. I can't wait for this one. I can't wait. Josh can't Allen, wait. he coming out for five touchdown passes against the yeah. Patriots. And, well, Patrick Mahomes is exactly who we know he is. Mm. Patrick. Let's Josh Josh it L here to get Pick him. Yeah. Yes. Or the Bills. Like they do the national anthem out there. And the home of the Bills coming up. You ready for this? <laughs> Yo, the Bills going to win, y'all. The Bills going to win. I know y'all think I'm a hater. I don't like Patrick Mahomes. I don't like the Chiefs. There's none of that. Just keeping the 100 with you guys. It's going to be Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. This is going to be a matchup. Of all the matchups this weekend, I'm probably most excited for this one because there's so much at stake between the two at the helm. It's the Chiefs. We know it's the Chiefs. I've said it all week. I'll say it again in my casual Friday wear. Patrick Mahomes has been where Josh Allen has only dreamt of being. Patrick Mahomes has accomplished what Josh Allen has only dreamt of accomplishing. Patrick Mahomes is who Josh Allen can only dream of being. Until Josh Allen can do, accomplish, and go where Patrick Mahomes has been, then I can't pick Josh Allen over Patrick Mahomes, big dog. Hey, aren't you a gambling man? Of course I am. And I'm not a gambling man, but I'm so damn confident in this one right here. Put a thigh wow on it, homeboy. We can. Put a th- what? Cash, though, not Naira. You know, a thousand no, no. Naira. Venmo? Not, not, <laughs> put a thigh on it. A thousand? Yes. Hell no. No, I was just talking that talk. I thought I was going to get a number high enough. No you weren't going to go. I ain't got no wife. I ain't going to miss it. Boy. You gonna, MJ going to be like, Daddy, why don't I have any ice cream this weekend? <laughs> Sorry, MJ. Lost the eyes. Bet <laughs> off. Bet off. Coming up. Hell no. Tom Brady is taking the TV 12 method to I'm another scared. level in the playoffs. Boy, you ain't scared. I ain't going to Vegas. <laughs> no Vegas with you. We'll tell you if he's keeping 100 or 99. Yeah, money Let's. don't make no money, Phil. <laughs> well, I made a lot of money scared. <laughs> <laughs> On this show, we don't even know how to keep it 100. But others, I'll keep it 99. So each day, we're going to get to the bottom. Who's really telling the truth? Case in point, pretty easy to say Tom Brady knows how to stay focused after winning seven Super Bowls. Take a listen. I don't do anything extra this week. I just want to do football. That's all I want to do to prepare and get ready. So, um, you know, that's how we should all approach it. This isn't the time for the, you know, trips to the, the, the movie theaters or the is the time to lock in on football. Mm, I told you, Tom Brady keeping it 100 or 99. It's interesting. He think he's keeping it 100, but then I thought to myself, you don't take group movie trips in the NFL. That's a college thing. So, Brady, what you really talking about? But Tom Brady is all football all the time right now. I don't know about you. In Buffalo, they gave us an AMC card. I was there every Where? single week. Yeah, real talk. A real talk. I thought you ain't win no game. Well, you really watching the Matrix. No, no, no. We didn't have Tom Brady. That's all we needed. <laughs> we would have been all right. Have a great weekend. Fox Men Live is next. What in the movies? Trust that. <laughs> Crazy.